Thank you, Brian. Next will be Paul Hinton and Willie. Well, good evening, everybody. It's wonderful to see how many people have come out. It was kind of exciting to hear the chatter and the enthusiasm of people come in. One of the challenges that we seem to have is conservatism. With conservatism is that we always are apologetic for our ideas and, and wanting to develop a better country. But if we look back historically and we see where Canada came from, we, we have a wonderful heritage. Our, our ancestors really truly believed in paying it forward. They didn't ask what was government going to do for me. It was always, what can I do for my children and my grandchildren? It's been interesting as I grew up, uh, when I was very young, we had a Chinese family that moved into our neighborhood. And the work that they did in the laundromat, in, in, the, in the small little store they ran, they, they worked long hours, their children were there. But she went on to become a doctor, and that, that opportunity was there for that generation. And the reason why I'm running tonight is because I'm afraid that that, op that opportunity and that hope isn't there for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. I think my children will probably be okay. They've got through, they've got their education, they're working. But the question is, is what's the future bringing towards us? That, uh, historically, that we have proven principles inside the Conservative Party. We know about balancing the books. We, we know about uh, true democracy. Uh, too often, we're living in a world now where people think the democratic process is, is two wolves voting on, uh, well, three of them there, two wolves and a sheep, the two wolves voting that the sheep's for supper. Uh, the purpose of our constitution in this great country is to protect every individual citizen. The, the, their life, their liberty, and their property needs to be protected. Families need to be protected. Uh, the, the attack on the family and the values and the desire for parents to pass on their values and principles to their children is being attacked by our federal government and our provincial government. They say that they know how to raise our children better than we do. They say they know how to spend our money better than we do. These aren't conservative principles. They've never worked anywhere in the world, and they're not going to work here. Uh, I, I look at governments around the world, and it's almost like sumo wrestlers. Who can grow and be the biggest, and who can eat or spend the most money? We need to get it under control. We need someone that's going to go up to Ottawa and say enough is enough. We, we need to change the way we're doing things. Uh, one of the things that probably amazed me the most when I first got in government is the year end came. And what we have in government departments is that we need to spend our money. And we need to change that. We need to look and see, you know, we need zero based budgeting. What's our priorities? How are we going to spend it? But I want to thank you for coming out. I'm looking forward to your questions. But the conservative principles that this nation was built on are true. We need to go back to them and we'll have a future for our children. But thanks very much for coming out. Looking forward to your questions. According to the Government of Canada, unemployment in southern Alberta has reached about 8%, leaving thousands of people in our community without a paycheck to support their families. Uh, how would you, how would you, if you were elected, how would you improve the economy in our region? Thank you, Mr. Hinton. Well, thank you, and it's an excellent question, and probably it's always about the economy. And I guess I'd start off with saying that, you know, we like to compete in sports around the world, but when we send our, our team there, we don't put five-pound weights around their ankles or 30-pound pack on their back. Uh, there's no question the best thing that we can do is attract capital and allow capital investment. And the pipeline is a $15 billion project, probably, if they'd allow it, but it's private money. It's not government-sponsored money. This is private business that actually wants to, to do that. And probably the best thing that we could do, and, and Prime Minister Harper and Flaherty talked about this in 2008, I was disappointed they didn't carry it out, that we need to uh, allow the, the, well, the attraction of capital or the flow of capital. And they talked about a six-month holiday if you reinvested capital. And if we were to allow the, the movement of capital within our country without taxing it, if you have one business and you want to sell that and reinvest in a new one, but it's about raising our capital and then we raise our gross domestic product. And we, we can't have rules and regulations that put us at an unfair level com compared to the world that we're competing with. Thank you. Mr. Scout. Thank you, Mr. Green. What's so critical to realize is that we have a world economy now, and we, we can and we will compete with that world economy, but we need access to it. And the, 
federal government needs to develop what we call transportation and utility corridors so that we can actually move our products back and forth across this country and have access to world market. As, as Mr. Mott was saying, the Western Canada Select compared to Brent uh, is terrible at times, $20, $30 uh, barrel spread. We need to get full world price for our product. We uh, have second to none environmental standards. We can do it uh, properly and we will do it properly. This is the large riding. It reaches from the borders of Saskatchewan to Rocky Mountains and from Jenner to the American border. Um, how will you ensure that this geographically diverse riding gets equal representation and timely service from their Member of Parliament if you are elected? Well, having the opportunity to uh, represent a, a good portion of this riding in the past, I understand the importance of it. traveling the riding. You need to go from one end to the other end. You need to have your phone available. And I'm like Joe, that uh, my number is always freely published. It's not uh, hidden and most people get, get a hold of me and they can do that. But most important is to meet with municipal government. Uh, they have a huge challenge. The, the amount of taxation that's pulled out of each of our communities and out of our area here uh, is, is dramatic and yet they're challenged with giving us most of the services that we need here at the local level, whether that's education, healthcare, senior care, all of those things. And so to meet with them, uh, to actually uh, have some plans on how we're going to get more money back from the federal and provincial government so we can get the services that we need in our riding and the facilities that we want. But I've done it in the past, I've worked hard, I know the importance of getting the funding back. They take the tax money from our riding. Uh, we, we need to have a better system set up rather than the, the political slush fund where they have uh, different grants and areas to try and ask for money back. We just need to have it sent back on a formula base. And thank you, Mr. Mom. I'll, I'll just go on my proven record. Uh, first of all, it was five hours to Edmonton. It's only two hours to Medicine Hat. I thought it was further than that. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I drove to Edmonton. It was quicker. <laughs> Government again. But the bottom line is I'm not a photo op politician. I, I actually go, I, I sit, I listen, I participate. You won't see me show up at a function uh, and then take off. If I'm coming to a, uh, uh, whatever you want to, uh, 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 lost the words, but if we're having a meeting there, um, something's going on, I, I'll be there for the full time. I'll listen, I'll learn, and I'll take that with me. If you want to know, you go. If you don't, you send somebody. I will go. <coughs> Well, we can't downplay the size of the constituency. I mean, it's too... Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is promising to end our first-past-the-post system of electing people to Parliament. The Conservative Party has been fighting for a referendum to happen before any changes are made to our voting system. Uh, what type of electoral or democratic reform would you like to see, if any, and why? Well, this is why we often lose as conservatives. The real problem is the power should always reside with the people. Preston Manning wanted democratic reform. The number one thing we need is recall. When people do something that are against our will, there's nothing we can do for three or four years under the current system. Re recall is critical. Citizens initiative referendum is critical. And the national referendum is critical on these things going forward. But it, it's, this is the problem with our democracy and why democracy as Alexander Teitler says, is doomed to fail because eventually the people will vote for the party that gives them the most out of the public purse and the economy of that country is destroyed. That's where we're getting. What we need is accountability through recall. That's the democratic reform that solves a lot of these problems. The power should always reside in the people, never in an elected representative for a term of three or four years because despotism takes place and, and it's hard to undo. Thank you, Mr. Hinden. Uh, open debate, Mr. Monson will go first. Did you, did you want to just... Uh, go just yeah, just go down. I guess I'll start with my actual time on the playing field, two times serving as an MLA, and then years on uh, different boards, uh, federally and provincially. I started off when I was 14. My grandfather used to be the uh, financial, well, the provincial treasurer for the Socred government for Ernest C. Manning. And so when I was very young, Grandpa started giving me books and saying, you need to read this, you need to understand this. And he, he raised me up uh, talking about good government, good policies, good economics. And I, I spent a lifetime studying the policies and why 
We need to change a lot of the things that we have going on because they're all politically motivated and we can take a lot of the politics out of governing if we have the desire to do so. And I, I have the strong desire, I've studied it, I've looked at it, there's answers out there for most of the dilemmas that we have, uh, not all of them, but the answers are there on how to make a more democratic, more peaceful, more secure, and most important, a more prosperous society. We just need to pay it forward. Yes, um, there's a couple of questions I think can be grouped together. I think it only would take a 30 second response. Unless, um, the one is, how many children under the age of 18 do you have? It's apparently some people are concerned you'll be neglecting them during this time. <laughs> and uh, second, when was the first time you were a member of the Conservative Party of Canada? Just the year, we don't need exact date. Been an empty nester for over five years and really, really enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> and I've been involved in politics uh, for over 40 years, uh, right right at the front line for, in campaigns, being on boards, being on policy committees. I was on the youth advisory board uh, when I was in my teens and as my grandfather always said, there's three things that affect you, your, your family, your community and your government. And if you're not involved with all of them, uh, they'll have a bad influence on you. So I've been involved all along and will continue to be. Okay, well I have two children, both grown. One is, both I'm very, very proud of, and both well-educated. My daughter has a degree in nursing. My son is somewhere in there hiding. Uh, he's the best ground. Well, for me, the, the family is the basic unit of, of society. And if we don't protect that unit, society collapses. If you look at uh, many of the despotic uh, rulers around the world, the first thing they want to do is to take the children out of the home. They want to indoctrinate them and they actually turn them into police and ask them what mom and dad are talking about. So even the UN recognized parental rights to say they're paramount and, and they need to be paramount here in Canada if we're going to continue to be successful and have the diversity that, that has made us so rich and, and such a great place to live. But it is very scary when a government says that they, they know the, the values and the morals that they should be taught to our children and wanting to uh, put that into our education system and those people that feel comfortable with that, that's fine. But for those who have problems, we need to protect their rights to protect their children from what they think isn't healthy. Uh, there's no reason why we can't have the tolerance uh, going both ways. And too often though the pendulum swings and we seem to say we need to protect the three uh, at the cost of the 97. And that doesn't work. We, we need people that are, are going to Ottawa, in my opinion, that, that understand we need to protect all Canadians. It doesn't matter what their ethnicity is, what their religion is, so long as what they're practicing doesn't hurt other people's lives, their, their property, or their freedoms. That when they start to impose, and I often use this, and it's uh, not the best example, but I have some good Jewish friends, I would never ever think of, of cooking up a ham and having them over and say, oh, don't worry about it, uh, you need to get over that and, and impose that. And governments uh, seem to love to say, well, this is okay for you. You, you need to ingest this. You need to take this. You need to, to support it and, and can, you know, conform to this. And, and that just doesn't, uh, what, that doesn't create a good society. And we need to protect those things. The family is the building unit of society. We need to protect the family. We need to protect the family or the parental rights. And we need to help taxes so that the families aren't uh, pulled apart because of tax consequences. Thank you. We'll now go to Mr. Benoit. Yes, we could be here till 2 in the morning on this one, but I'm pro-life, I'm pro-conscious rights protection, but what we really need to do again is how, how do we resolve this? And the Conservative Party of Canada really needs to be part of our platform next time, in my opinion, where we're going to change the, the playing field. If we really want a democratic society and, and to be able to listen to the voice of the people, this is something that absolutely needs a, a referendum from the people. 300 plus elected representatives should not be making decisions like this and act like we're really reflecting the view of Canadians. We need to have a referendum on these things that we should on all social issues that are major changes like this on euthanasia and other areas. And, and as, a, as a party, we need to say that we'll get in, we'll put in accountability through recall, have citizens initiative referendum and we'll use uh, like I say any social issues like this where we're changing the laws whether that's the definition of marriage euthanasia abortion 
will actually go to a referendum of the people and will entrench that law such that the only way it can be repealed is through a referendum of the people, not a caucus with the majority vote. Thank you. A question is, um, and I'm going to group these, there's concerns about the ballooning budget, and one way to resolve it would be to go back and try to change old age security back to 65 or to even later. Um, do you have a vote on, or do you have a viewpoint on that? And I believe it's Mr. Ranger's turn to, to answer first. Mr. Hinman? Well, ballooning budgets and unfunded liabilities are the two big ones. The elephants in the room are deficits around $640 billion. I think are unfunded liabilities to pension plans and other things is close to $1.4 trillion. They need to be addressed. We actually need to go back to zero-based budgeting. Right now, the government departments are in a basis where they need, to, they need to spend what they're allocated. We need to change that to what you need to spend on what we need, and we need to prioritize those things. But uh, 60 seconds, this is like asking for open heart surgery um, <laughs> and, and to get it done. We, we, we need to change the way we're thinking. Uh, we need to pass legislation probably to say that we have to balance the books, which means municipally we need to raise taxes then. If in fact we are being imposed with a 10 or a 15 or a 22% tax increase, all of a sudden the government would think different. And those are things as a Conservative Party of Canada we should be talking about before the next election so that people actually have a choice and know that there's a serious uh, a commitment to address the problems. But this idea to borrow and someone else pay later, it's unethical, it's wrong, and it needs to change. Um, we, are, we are kind of getting to the end of our time. Um, I'm going to suggest that each candidate give a, a two-minute closing remarks. I, I agree with all of the candidates who have either indirectly or directly. Thank you, fellow candidates. Thank you, Brian. Next, Mr. Hinman. Last. Oh, I have another slide. Well, it's safe to talk to, to Mr. Last. Benoit after, so. <laughs> Well, I, I want to thank everybody for coming out. You, you deserve a big round of applause for yourself being here. You're, you're a very small minority of our uh, constituents, and I, I thank you for it. Too many people want to always attack the 1%. I, I cherish the 1%. You're very valuable. Thank you. And thank you, fellow candidates, uh, for running. Uh, it is great to have choice. I love the free market. You have six individuals up here offering their services to you. Uh, we're committed to the conservative uh, government and the way to the future. We need to turn this great country of ours around again. We definitely are heading towards the iceberg. We all know it in this room. Most Canadians know it. But the question is, is what, what are we going to offer? We need to offer a strong economy. We need to go back to the free market and allow those entrepreneurs, those uh, business people, the people with capital to invest that with confidence, knowing that the government isn't going to put up roadblocks and cause problems. We absolutely need to protect our families. They're, they're critical, as many have said here, to the future of, of our country. We need to protect the families. We need to have democratic reform. We are, you know, when you look in the world and how much has changed, whether it's airplanes, whether it's computers, whether it's uh, medical, we, we've had leaps forward, but yet we're still stuck in the same old democratic policies that we've been doing for 100, 200 years. We need to change. We need to put the power back into your hands. I believe in you. I hope you will believe in me. We need to have recall, we need to have citizens initiative referendum, and, and we need to have uh, referendums on critical issues. I, I just I, I disagree saying that uh, the people won't turn out. Uh, we need to let the people make that decision, just as we will in this election. But these are exciting times. Uh, when you're down at the lowest and being beat up like we are, that's where you can see the furthest ahead. We, we can turn the economy around. We need good policies, economic policies. We need good social policies. And I'll just finish, well, I think I'm out of time. <laughs> Anyways, it's been wonderful. Thanks for coming out. And I ask you to consider me for your first choice. And if I'm not your first choice, I hope that you'll consider me as your second choice. I will work very hard for you. I'm dedicated. I've shown it in the past. I have a proven track record of my passion for good government, for my diligence in serving my constituents, and I will carry on with that track record. Thank you, and have a great night.
of the nomination.